What's 369? Uh, 369 is the, uh, the truck number and it's 369 because damn she's fine. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> This is a uh, Sun Valley 8 car, but they call it their low pro because this top deck will come all the way down to here, which is unique for uh, car haulers because you can load it from the ground level. Uh, so the first thing we generally do is we drop the air out of the trailer to drop it a couple inches. That keeps you from rubbing in any of the, uh, the front of the cars. And on these trailers, they're, um, they're kind of nice because just about everything is hydraulic. The ramps are even hydraulic. Um, so on this one, we've just got a switch that'll activate the hydraulics. You push the lever and you start getting the ramps to go uh, straight out in the back. This is my home. Uh, right now I've got my bunk down. I've got my winter gear stored up here is what I've got. But in the summertime, this is folded up. Okay. And so that I've got all this room here. Okay. I've got, a, uh, I've got a closet that I can store clothes in. I've got a refrigerator that I can store cold food. Nice and then, and, yeah, and then I can put some frozen stuff up here. Uh, I got utility drawers for, for different items okay. in there. It's got a little microwave here. I got my microwave, nice. uh, which, is, which is very handy. So I got my oil temperature gauge right here, yeah. which, which is very critical. You want to make sure what your um, uh, oil temperatures run at all time. You got your front drive axle. That's a temperature gauge for your front drive axle. The suspension. This will tell much how much load you have on your on your trailer. This is an air filter. Uh, you want it running at zero on on your air filter. This is the rear axle okay. drive temperature. Nice. And of course my fuel gauge. So you can use either either one axle or both. Well, or... it, it records both of them, but okay. we have a switch right here. We have a switch right here that will, I can lock it in, and then it's driving both of them at the same time. But it'll give you a temperature on both gauges. But we only use this in ice and snow, yeah. and or when we're chained up. So yeah, yeah. This is a um, um, a dump valve that'll that'll dump the the uh, the drive axle okay. on the trailer. And this is this one here is to, uh, which they've got it covered so you can't bump it. Right, right. But this is to slide your fifth wheel. Okay. That's where the trailer hooks onto. We want to start lifting the whole top deck off so we can pull out the bottom cars first. What you want to watch for are the pinch points. Uh, like if you look here, there's only a couple inches between these cars. So if you lift that back deck up too much, they'll come together. So you just got to be very. Uh, kind of mindful of everything. It's good to walk back and forth uh, a couple of times and kind of see where your issue points are gonna be and then lift it up accordingly. So this is um, just a roller through here. This is a pin that just keeps it in place. And uh, you just use a breaker bar to loosen that up. Each strap has uh, these little rubber stoppers on them, they're tire grooves. These fit in between the tires so it keeps the strap from slipping from one side to the other. Some cars are already a little beat up. This one's already got some scratches and some loose things on it. It was a, uh, um, a used car, but you got to treat them all about the same and make sure you're not adding any damage or anything. Do you take note of the damage to each vehicle, basically? We do. We do a bill of laden, um, which is basically a report of the mileage and uh, the condition of the car before we ever take it. This is my tractor brake. Okay. This is my trailer brake. Okay. Most generally, we always set this, but when we're unloading, we have to have both of them pulled out so that we can operate the uh, the back uh, trailer there. Uh, this is my this is my Jake brake here. Mm -hmm. That means it's on, and I usually pretty much leave it on. And then you got um, there's one stage, two stage, three stage. So depending on the hill that you're going down, you may 
you may have to feather that back and forth okay so that you're not using your brakes i i don't like using my brakes coming down the hill so uh on of course there's your uh def that's okay. the def that's yeah, the, yeah. the efficiency fuel this is my air pressure gauge which usually runs uh closer to 150 but we've used some air out of here so it's it's dropped down but that tells me that that what my primary and secondary uh, air filter or air pressure is. Mm -hmm. This is this is my uh, my brake pressure here. So if I if I pull this handle down, that tells me how much application and or on the foot. Okay. It tells me how much I'm I'm applying to my brakes. Okay. Of course, speedometer, fuel, fuel, tack. Uh, yeah. My battery, which is is critical. This is uh, my oil pressure gauge. And my water temperature gauge. Those are, those are the two that I watch a lot right there. So you guys are not using chains, but straps? We're using straps, and uh, that's kind of the way the industry's going anyway. We use over the wheel straps to um, uh, basically protect the frame because chain trailers, what they do is much like here, they've still got rollers on them, but the chains will hook to the bottom of the car. Some transporters will wrench on them too hard and uh, it'll actually pull the eye holes out of the frame. So if your car is delivered with chains, you want to make sure that you peek under there and make sure that they haven't been out your frame because technically that's frame damage and could be a big deal. If you had a Chevy Traverse back here and maybe like a sedan on the bottom, like a Cadillac or something like that, you might get overweight. You're allowed to be 34,000 pounds on your trailer axis between the two of them. So if you run over a scale and you're 35,000 pounds, you'll get a fine for it. That's a 13 speed. Okay. So you, you go through your, your bottom set and then you split it to the high side. Okay. And then go back through the gears again and then you you go, that's low okay. and that's high. Okay. Is what you do. So thank you for coming and kind of showing everybody what it is we do. And, yeah. Uh, Ray makes it look easy, but I promise it's not. Thank, thanks, Ray. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting thanks you. Thanks a lot. Well, last time you saw me, we had an, uh, a Ford F450 of 2011. Uh, I drove that and drove that and drove that until it had about 250,000 miles on it and took it to Ford and um, they gave me some pretty good money for it and I got a, uh, got a new one. Okay. There was nothing really currently wrong with the old one, but um, for you know tax write-off purposes and just to get into something that uh, maybe I didn't have any unforeseen maintenance, I got this um, F-350 Platinum.